Hi, and welcome to another Razorback screencast. In the last episode, I believe we left off while uh, detailing the kinetic energy recovery system flywheel housing. I think we can resume that. I'm just going to hide the blades so we can add a few more details to this. Now, one of the details that I think this could benefit from is uh, sort of more of a blocky structure. So what I mean by that is that we could select this portion right here as well as this portion here, for example, and then do some sort of extrude operation on it. So we can do an extrude inner and then extrude inwards like that to sort of create more details. But before doing that, I want to add some more loop detail. So if we were to use the knife tool in loop mode, we could then sort of uh, move it so that there's a piece of geometry right here. We could do something similar on the other side doesn't necessarily have to be the same size. And then that gives us the ability to select a smaller region like that. And we can probably get a little more uniform with these. For instance, we could make that four segments and then four segments separated by two. And then perhaps we could do four more segments up front like that, separated by two, and then uh, go into wireframe mode and do four more. Now this looks kind of, kind of offset at the moment, so I wonder if there's a way we could make this a little bit better. Let's try four segments, and then we skip four, and then four segments, and then we skip four, then four segments, and then we skip four on either side. That actually looks a lot better. And what I think we can do is loop right over the top and come down the other side. So we have that sort of continuous look. Now I want to be subtle about how far we extrude this on the way out. So we have all of our segments selected. So what we can do now is sort of just use our extrude tool and extrude inwards. We don't want to go too far because then those bevels get really tiny and they flip inside out. So just make sure you don't go too far. And what this is going to do is give us much more of a sci-fi look. It doesn't really make much sense why those indentations are there, but they definitely look sort of intentional and techy. Now, if we weren't happy about where these hoses were landing now, we can always change that as well. But another thing we can do is we can use the loop selection tool to select the loop of edges that runs along the outside of this, and we can bevel them. Even before that, we can actually select these inside edges right here and bevel them like that to give it a softer look. So I think I'm going to do that. Just going to continue to select these edges. I think I forgot this set on the far side. So I should have 12 edges selected in total. Then we can use the bevel tool to just round them off a little bit. 
Once we've got that done, we can select the loop tool, loop selection. We can select the outside and the inside of each of these. I'm thinking we'd want to do a, uh, a rounded bevel, a convex bevel with a subdivision of two to get the look we're after, which is like a sharp bend. And we probably want to turn off end gons so that we get those nice lines in the middle. It's one of those times when I wish I had the R15 bevel tool. Bevel tool in the new version of Cinema 4D is fantastic. Okay, so there we have it. We have a, a little bit more of a high-tech looking flywheel housing. And like we said before, we can reroute these hoses because I believe we still have a bit of construction history on those. So see how difficult that would be. If we were to We have a sweep nerve spline. So we just use a rectangle selection and move that around. We have to make sure that the rotation sticks. So we should probably just push it instead of rotating it. So I'm going to push it to the center there. And then we have the cylinder instance. I believe in the past we used the snap tool to make sure it was at the right spot. But I think I'm satisfied with it if it's just close enough. All right, and then this one here, it's going to be a little bit trickier. We can do it. Again, we select the spline and point mode. We're just going to select those points there. And what we can do is sort of bring it over here until it meets one of these center lines and then rotate it a bit. So it straightens out. That's going to put a bit of a kink there. But what we can do is select that point and choose soft interpolation, which is going to smooth it out a little bit for us. Then we can select this cylinder, move it over just so it lines up pretty well, and it still looks okay. It looks kind of funky down here but that's something we can fix in the future if we want. I'm gonna tweak it a little bit so just sort of straighten it. We can even rotate it so it faces better. And what we might find is that the bend just sort of looks better from a 3D perspective if you do that. So it looks pretty cool. I mean, there's endless tweaks that you could make to this flywheel housing to make it look better. One of the things I'm seeing is this sort of soft shading issue here. You're seeing it a lot on a lot of these areas. And we can address those by tweaking the Fong tag and maybe doing some more extrusions. So the Fong tag right now is using edge breaks. I probably want to turn that off. And then the Fong angle is 39, which is really low. I usually like something around 60. So we change it to 60 and we see the smoothing happens in those areas now instead of being super sharp, which is nice. But we still have this weird patchiness on the flat surfaces. And the way I typically get rid of that is by selecting the flat surfaces themselves and doing an extrude inner. Let me sort of do that now so you can see the technique. I think the easiest way is going to be to select some loops and then use fill selection. So I'm going to use the loop selection. I'm going to select the polygon loop that is highest on each of these three areas. And once I've selected those, 
you can actually use the fill selection to select everything else. And once we have this selected, what we can do is just sort of look at the distance that we're dealing with here and try to do an extrude inner of a similar distance. So we just do an extrude inner above about that much and it creates a new row of polygons all the way around. And what it does in the process is it sort of flattens out our geometry so that it looks much more stiff and uniform instead of curving with the Fong shading. So that's a nice little trick. Something else we could do to make the flyway look a little more intricate is to create maintenance panels. So right now these are simply indentations. But if we give them purpose as sort of panels that unbolt, it could really spruce up the look, I think. So we can do that, but we have to start by modifying them slightly. Right now we have this dual bevel, which looks really smooth and really slick, but it doesn't really fit if they're panels. So what we'll do is we'll select just the inside parts of these. So what I'm going to do is, one at a time, I'm going to do a loop selection, followed by a fill selection. And once I have this the fill selection selected, I'm going to set selection. Deselect it. Then, I do the same thing again right here. Loop selection, followed by a fill selection. and then set selection. One more time. Loop selection. Fill selection. Set selection. Now with these three selection tags, I can really quickly select the first one and then select those polygons, and then select those polygons. Then I have all the polygons I'm interested in. I'm going to zoom in really close for this next step. What I want to do is do a normal move so that this part actually sort of pushes upwards. So if I choose the normal move tool and then just click and drag, I can actually push it up like that. What this is going to do is give these the impression of being panels that bolt in because we've sort of created a seam right there. One more thing that we can do is use outline selection to select the outline of these and then bevel the edge. Loop selection may actually work better. Let's try that first. Let's go from the side view using our live selection tool and in edge mode, I'm going to set it to select right through the object. And that way I can just select these really easily. These are some lines that were created when those end gones were created, but I want those gone for this step because they will affect the bevel that we do. So with those edges selected, I can just press UZ and it melts them away. Now we can actually go in with the loop selection tool again and just holding down shift every time I click I can add to the selection and I can select those three loops. So with these three loops now selected I can do a bevel operation one more time and it looks like a panel. So now that we've made those look like panels, that groove alongside each one, I think it would be really cool to put some bolts. I mean, the idea is that this flywheel housing contains a vacuum. So if it does contain a vacuum, it'll have to be pretty high pressure. And if these are removable for inspection or maintenance, then we would probably need 
some sort of heavy duty hardware holding it down. But I think Allen bolts will do pretty well. So here's how we're going to do this. We know that this started off as a cylinder, therefore its center point should be perfectly aligned with these. So we can lay the bolts out once on this side and have them automatically copied two times. I think the best way to do that is with an instance. So the flywheel housing center is here. Let's start off by creating a null object. I'm going to cut the null object and then I'm going to paste it inside of the flywheel housing object. So it's down here somewhere. Set its position to zero and its rotation to zero. And now it is in the center. Brilliant. So what we can do is we can copy one of these Allen bolts into that null object. So let's just start off by finding one. Looks like there's some bolts here. Here's one. So I'm going to copy the original bolt and I'm going to paste it inside of this null object. Now we can set its rotation and position to zero. Move it up here. And we can use that constraint trick to start placing it along the surface. Of course, that's a really large bolt. We're probably going to want it to be much smaller, about that size. Maybe a little larger. And then what we do is we add a constraint tag to it. And we set up a clamp constraint to a target, which is going to be the flywheel housing, the distance of zero. And the mode is going to be surface, use normals, And let's see, align. What am I forgetting? Something's not right. There we go y-axis is normal. So now, from the side view, we can simply start placing these. So one down in the corner, and then we create an instance. Bring the instance down to where we're working and add a constraint to it as well. Now we can sort of just copy and paste these as we like. So these are actually lining up at the other side. So I'm going to bring them all down a little bit. Now I mentioned that we'll be able to copy them to these other ones quite easily. And the way that I intend to do that is by taking this null object, let's call it a bolts parent. And then we just create an instance of it. And then we can just rotate it into place. Let me do that one more time. And now they all sort of line up. And if I were to continue to place bolts on this surface, they get replicated. So I'm just going to place some more of these.
All the while, they're sticking to the surface and being replicated on the other two panels. They don't have to be perfect, not in our case. So now we can go back to the side view and resume our work moving down the other side. So this one will still be up here. And this one will still be down at the bottom. But the one in the middle will be in the middle of those instead of in the middle of the ones on the other side. So once we're finished placing these bolts using our constraints, we can get rid of the constraints. Remember the goal is for this thing to look scary looking, futuristic, yet plausible. So that's what I'm going for. I mean, some of the technology here is close to science fiction, but not quite. And that's a really nice place to write a thriller novel. So you get to have a little bit of fun with what's actually possible. Okay, so now that those are all set, I'm going to remove all the constraint tags. This step is really important. I have a five minute tip where I covered why. Essentially, the starting coordinates of each of these constraint tags gets applied to each of these objects when you open the file. So if you leave these constraint tags on there, close the file and reopen it, all the bolts are going to be on in one position, right on top of each other. So we have the bolts parent, and then we have these two instances. So we can turn those off and on to really quickly see how they influence it. And I think that's probably enough for the flywheel housing stuff. It's starting to look really menacing, I think. And in the next video, we'll probably take a look at the batteries that live on the other side. So until next time, see ya.